Oleg Antonovich Gordievsky was born on the 10th of October 1938 in Moscow, in what was then the Soviet Union. He is known as arguably one of the greatest spies of his era. Gordievsky is a former colonel of the KGB, who became KGB resident spy and bureau chief in London. He was a double agent providing information to the British Secret Intelligence Service, or MI6, from 1974 through to 1985. After being recalled to Moscow under suspicion, he was exfiltrated from the Soviet Union in July 1985 under a plan codenamed Operation Pimlico. The Soviet Union subsequently sentenced him to death in absentia. He is now retired and lives in the UK. The son of an officer of the NKVD, the precursor to the KGB, Gordievsky proved an excellent student at the school, where he learned to speak German. He studied at the prestigious Moscow University, the Moscow State Institute of International Relations, and later undertook NKVD training, where in addition to espionage skills, he mastered German and also learned to speak Danish, Swedish and Norwegian. It is here his highly decorated career in espionage began. The Iron Curtain Descends On completion of his studies, Gordievsky joined the Foreign Service and was posted to East Berlin in August 1961, just before the erection of the Berlin Wall. The burning of the wall appalled him and he became disillusioned with the Soviet system. After spending a year in Berlin, he returned to Moscow. Gordievsky joined the KGB in 1963 and was posted to the Soviet Embassy in Copenhagen in 1966. He became outraged by the USSR's cruel crushing of the Prague Spring Reform Movement in Czechoslovakia in August of 1968 and began sending covert signals to Danish and British intelligence agents and agencies that he might be willing to cooperate with them. He tried to send a covert sympathetic message to the PET, the Danish Security Intelligence Service, but his three-year stint ended and he returned to Moscow before making any direct contact. By the time he arrived again in Copenhagen in October 1972 for a second three-year stint, both the PET and MI6, which had been tipped off by one of Gordievsky's old university friends, felt he was a persuadable agent. MI6 subsequently made contact with Gordievsky and began running him as a double agent in 1974. In 1974, he agreed to pass secrets to MI6, a step he viewed as nothing less than undermining the Soviet system. MI6 gave him the codename Sunbeam. His second posting to Denmark ended in 1978 and he was recalled to Moscow. This time for a lengthy period because he quickly divorced his wife and married a woman he had been having an affair with and the KGB frowned upon affairs and divorces as immoral. During this Moscow period, it was too risky for him to send any information to MI6. After he learned to speak English and lobbied heavily for a position that opened up in London, the KGB posted Gordievsky to London in June of 1982. He steadily advanced in rank there with the help of secret aid and manipulation by MI6, which handed him abundant non-damaging information and contacts. MI6 also steadily banished his direct superiors back to Moscow on trumped-up charges so that Gordievsky took their place. He continued to provide secret documents and information to MI6, which he passed easily on via a London safe house. While in London, his MI6 codename was Nocton. The CIA, told of MI6's high-level informant, but not his name or position, gave him the codename Tickle. Two of Gordievsky's most important contributions were averting a potential nuclear confrontation with the Soviet Union, when the Soviets misinterpreted the NATO exercise Abel Archer 83 as a potential first strike, and identifying Mikhail Gorbachev as the Soviet heir apparent long before he came to prominence. Indeed, the information passed by Gordievsky became the first proof of how worried the Soviet leadership had become about the possibility of a NATO nuclear first strike. Next stop, execution. In late April 1985, he was promoted to KGB station chief in London at the Soviet embassy. However, merely a few weeks later in mid-May 1985, he was suddenly ordered back to Moscow although MI6 allowed him the option to instead defect and stay in London under their protection. On the 19th of May 1985, he left for Moscow. 
After his arrival, he was taken to a KGB safe house outside Moscow, where he was drugged and interrogated. He was questioned for about five hours, after which he was released and told he would never work abroad again. He was suspected of espionage for a foreign power, but his superiors stalled on taking any overt further action against him. In June of 1985, he was joined in Moscow by his wife and two children, who had been living with him in London. Although MI6 had never revealed the identity of their mole in the KGB to the American CIA, there was great suspicion that a high-ranking American CIA officer, Aldrich Ames, who had been selling secrets to the KGB, reported Gordievsky's treachery to Soviet counterintelligence. Ames first met and sold classified information to a KGB agent on the 15th of May 1985 in Washington DC. The following day, Gordievsky received a telegram from KGB leadership recalling him to Moscow. A 1994 report by the Washington Post, however, stated that, after six weeks of questioning Ames, the FBI and CIA remain baffled about whether Ames or someone else first warned the Soviets about Gordievsky. An FBI report later stated that Ames had not advised the Soviets about Gordievsky until the 13th of June 1985, at which point Gordievsky was already under KGB surveillance. Nevertheless, most people involved in the Gordievsky case believe that Ames provided sufficient information to prompt an investigation by Colonel Viktor Budanov, the KGB's top investigator, and trigger Gordievsky's recall. Operation Pimlico An elaborate escape plan from the USSR had already been devised for Gordievsky by MI6 in 1978 when the KGB had called him back to Moscow for a few years after his second three stint in Copenhagen. The escape plan was codenamed Operation Pimlico. Although he almost certainly remained under KGB surveillance, Gordievsky managed to send a covert signal to MI6 which activated the elaborate escape plan. He waited on a particular street corner on a particular weekday at 7.30pm, carrying a Safeway bag as a signal. An MI6 agent walked past carrying a Harrods bag, eating a Mars bar, and the two made eye contact. These mutual signals indicated that the escape plan was to be activated immediately. On the 19th of July 1985, Gordievsky went for his usual jog, but he instead managed to evade his KGB tails and boarded a train to Leningrad, and then travelled on to a rendezvous south of Viborg, near the Finnish border. There, he was met by British embassy cars, after they managed to lose the three KGB surveillance cars following them. Lying down in the boot of a Ford Sierra saloon, he was smuggled across the border into Finland. Two British diplomats and their wives were Gordievsky's courier. To dissuade sniffer dogs at the Finnish border, one of the wives dropped her baby's dirty nappy on the ground, causing the dogs to flee. Gordievsky was flown to the UK via Norway, where his MI6 codename was changed to Ovation. Soviet authorities subsequently sentenced Gordievsky to death in absentia for treason, a sentence never rescinded by post-Soviet Russian authorities, but which cannot be legally carried out because of Russia's then membership in the Council of Europe. His wife was unaware of her husband's defection, as she and their children were on holiday in the Azerbaijan SSR at the time of his escape. She was interrogated and detained for some six years, the Soviets wrongly presuming that she had been complicit in Gordievsky's activities. However, their marriage was effectively dead by then, and eventually it floundered completely. Gordievsky's exfiltration greatly embarrassed both the KGB and the Soviet Union and resulted in disruptions by Viktor Babunov, the KGB's chief of counterintelligence within the KGB. Not yet out of the woods. Gordievsky has written a number of books on the subject of the KGB and is a frequently quoted media pundit on the subject. He met with US President Ronald Reagan in 1987, who wrote in his diary of their meeting, his wife and two little girls were left behind. We've been trying to get them out to join him. In a later diary entry, he referenced Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher's efforts. We're going to hold back and see if she can get his wife and two children out of Russia. In 1990, he was consultant editor of the Journal Intelligence and National Security, 
and he worked on television in the UK in the 1990s. On the 26th of February 2005, he was awarded an honorary degree of Doctor of Letters by the University of Buckingham in recognition of his outstanding service to the security and the safety of the United Kingdom. Gordievsky was appointed Companion of the Most Distinguished Order of St Michael and St George, or CMG, for services to the security of the United Kingdom in the 2007 Queen's Birthday Honours. The Guardian newspaper noted that it was the same gong given to his fictional Cold War colleague, James Bond. Gordievsky lived for years in a safe house in London, and security has been tightened since the Salisbury poisonings. A September 2018 article indicated that by that time, he was living in an undisclosed location in the home counties of England. In April 2008, the media reported that on the 2nd of November 2007, Gordievsky had been taken by ambulance from his home in Surrey to a local hospital, where he spent 34 hours unconscious. He claimed that he was poisoned with thallium by rogue elements in Moscow. He accused MI6 of forcing Special Branch to drop its early investigations into his allegations. According to him, the investigation was only reopened due to the intervention of former MI5 director General Eliza Manning and Buller. In Gordievsky's opinion, the culprit was a UK-based Russian business associate who had supplied him with pills, which he said were the sedative Xanax, purportedly for insomnia. He refused to identify the associate, saying British authorities had advised against it. Gordievsky accused MI6 of trying to suppress the incident from being known. I realised they wanted to hush up the crime, he remarked. There had been accusation and counter-accusation. If they are saying I am not affected by the poison, then why did I spend two weeks in hospital? Oleg Antonovich Gordievsky lived a life most only read about, and to this day is living in hiding and constant uncertainty as to where the next attempt on his life may come from. His courage to stand up to the country of his birth and go behind their back, jeopardising his own safety and the safety of those he loves, is a testament to his nature and character to do what he believes is best for humanity. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please give it a like. And for more amazing tales and thrilling stories, don't forget to subscribe to Uncovered Secrets. Also, hit the bell icon to stay notified for every release.